Hi, my name is Sarah, and my channel is Naughty Gnome Crafts. If you're new here, welcome, and if you're returning, thank you for coming back. My channel is all about the fibery crafts that I love, like knitting, sewing, and crochet, so if that interests you, please stay tuned. Today's video is going to be all about my October makes. So I'm just going to dive right in. The first thing that I finished in October is my Halloween socks. I had just gotten a desire, a whim, to make some Halloween socks for the month of October, and so I dug out a skein of yarn from my stash that's been there for a while. Um, it's Peepaloo Fields, and the colorway was called Cauldron Bubble or something like that. I can't remember the name of it. Um, but this dyer is no longer in business anyway, and so this colorway is no longer available. But I just did a uh, Blueberry Waffles socks, which this stitch pattern I've used over and over and over again. And um, this time, just for a little bit of a change, I did make the socks with 68 stitches instead of my usual 64. And I found that I really do like the fit of the socks. They're very comfortable. So I think from now on, I'm going to do my um, socks for myself on 68 stitches. And um, I think I did these cuff down and kind of my standard um, sock, although I did add, I did do a short row heel just to mix it up a little bit. And then I did a spiral toe. So the second thing that I finished was my hand spun beret. I also on a whim had gotten this desire to knit with some hand spun. So I pulled out a skein of Hello Yarn Targi that I had spun a few years ago. I had actually knit this yarn into a different project and I ended up frogging it and reclaiming the yarn. So this beret was just a very simple basic hat pattern that I got from the book, uh, the Knitter's Handy Book of Patterns. Um, it was one of the TAM patterns. And um, I'm still a little bit undecided whether I like this or not on me. Um, I've been wanting to try a beret to try a little bit of a different style. It is a little bit difficult, I think, to style a beret and get it to look right. It kind of takes a little bit more like fidgeting around to make it look right. Um, so for that reason, I don't know that I'm gonna be a, a total beret convert. Um, I think that I prefer the standard ease of wearing a beanie, um, but it was fun to try it out and I have worn it a few times since I finished it. So the next item that I finished was the Fiber Mood Julia dress. This was made in collaboration with Michelle from Michelle Sews Again. We had both purchased the same fabric and then we each made it into a different garment. Michelle made a lovely uh, Closet Core Cali dress with a ruffle hack at the bottom. And I really kind of want to copy her <laughs> and make one of those for myself. But for my dress, I did the Fiber Mood Julia and um, this dress was a little bit of a struggle. I will link my video up in the cards in case you want to go back and check out that story. But I think it turned out okay in the end and I have worn it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and insert the footage of me the way that I actually wore it when I did wear it to work. Um, and it was nice. I, ha I enjoyed wearing it. It was a comfortable dress to wear, very easy to just throw on and go. Um, so I do like the dress and I think that it'll see more wear, especially in the spring and summer months. Um, maybe not so much in the winter, um, but maybe I could try layering it later on with like a turtleneck or something. The next item that I made was my Paper Theory Zadie jumpsuit. I made this uh, as part of a challenge, the So Purple to End ALZ that was hosted by Michelle from Michelle Sews Again. And um, I used a lilac uh, linen rayon fabric that I got from fabric.com. And I absolutely love this jumpsuit. I just, it's easy to style. Um, I put it on for a winter look with a turtleneck layered underneath it. It was very comfortable to wear. I did wear this outfit to work and I will say that it was a little bit um, iffy with the whole bathroom issue just because the ties are so long. Like they, they, I had to be extra careful so that everything stayed off the floor when I was putting it on and taking it off. So it's a little bit more of a hassle, I would say, in terms of actually wearing it to work as opposed to my other jumpsuit, which has an elastic waist. Um, but I still really like it. I love the look of it, and I'm sure that I'm gonna wear it more in the years to come. The next item that I finished was Simplicity 8641. It's a pinafore dress that is from was designed by Sew House 7. It's the Burnside Bibs dress, and I actually really surprised myself by how much I like this dress. I've already worn it a couple of times. I do find it a very easy layering piece that you can put on so many different tops uh, um, underneath it. And I did make a styling video with this dress and the next one that I'm gonna show you, so I will link that up in the cards in case you missed it. 
Um, but for this, I just am wearing a simple t-shirt underneath, and I think that's probably the way that I'll wear it most of the time. Um, I actually haven't worn this to work yet, but I have worn it a few times just for like hanging out around the house, and I find it very comfortable to wear. So I really do like how this dress came out. The next item that I finished is also a pinafore dress. It's McCall's 7831, and I used a, a remnant piece of bold denim that I had in my stash for a long time. And um, I really like this dress. The way that I have styled it, I did actually wear this outfit to work, and I loved it. I thought that it was a really good outfit layered with the blazer over top. I just feel like the blazer took it up a notch and made it look a little bit more professional. Um, but I do really like this dress. Now, I think when I originally talked about it, I forgot to mention one thing, which is that the dress as drafted is really short. Like, I think I actually hemmed it the length that the, the instructions said to. And for me, for my body, it fits me perfectly, but I'm four foot nine. And so if you are taller or have longer legs or more average sized legs, um, definitely check the length of this if you wanna make it because it does come up quite short. Um, I haven't worn this one quite as much as I've worn the blue one, just because I think that the chambray denim is a little bit more versatile, but I do see myself wearing this um, in the future, and I definitely want to make another one because I do really like the style. The next item that I finished is Simplicity 9239. I have a full review of this pattern that I will link up in the cards. This is probably my favorite item of the month. I just absolutely love it. I, um, the fabric that I used is a Mind the Maker denim that I got from d &H Fabrics. And I've already worn this jacket several times during the month. It's just so comfortable. I love how it's just slightly oversized and it basically goes with everything. And I really do feel like this is gonna be a staple piece in my closet. I plan on wearing it for years and years. I just absolutely love it so much. The next thing that I finished was my needle sharp box for the month. Um, it was the Chalk and Notch Page hoodie that I converted into a dress. And the fabric that I used was some Atelier Brunette sweatshirting. And um, I really like this dress. I basically lived in it since I finished it. It's a very comfortable loungewear piece. I mostly just been wearing it around the house with leggings. And for this video, I went ahead and cinched it in the middle with a belt because I do think that that looks a little bit more flattering for my, pick, for my personal figure. Um, but just most of the time I don't wear it. I don't really style it. I just wear it and it's very comfortable. It's like basically wearing a robe um, or your nightgown in the house that it's so soft and comfortable and cozy. I really do like the way that this turned out and I actually want to make another page hoodie like the regular version um, and I'm hoping to do that sometime this winter. So the next two pieces were made from the leftovers that I had from the Atelier Brunette sweatshirting. I didn't want to put it back in my stash and just let it languish there, so I went ahead and used it up. So the first piece that I finished was the 5 out of 4 Diane Joggers pattern. I've made this pattern before and I do find the, um, the style of the pants very comfortable to wear. So I did um, do quite a bit of extensive work to get it to fit me a little bit better, but I'm pretty happy with those changes and I used the Atelier Brunette sweatshirting with some leftover bamboo cotton French terry that I had got from Emma One Sock. And um, for this um, clip, I paired it with my Made It Patterns hug hoodie, which is made out of the same French terry fabric. And so that's kind of what I meant when I said that I have a little bit of a loungewear capsule that I can mix and match those pieces and um, wear them together, which is really great because it, who doesn't love cute matching loungewear? The next item I made was the So DIY Alley sweatshirt. I really like this one. I love the way that the green contrasts with the Atelier Brunette with the, the different yoke. Um, and for this piece, I went ahead and styled it a little bit more dressy. I went ahead and threw it on with a pair of jeans and some knee-high boots. And that's how I would wear it if I were going out. Um, it's a very, very comfortable sweatshirt to wear for, for around the house. But I do think that it looks nice enough that I could wear it out to work or to do errands or whatever. Um, I really like this sweatshirt a lot. I think I'm gonna be wearing it um, quite a bit. The next item that I finished was another Pattern Emporium Keep It Simple Babe Tee. This was the fifth time that I've made this pattern, but the first time doing the long sleeve turtleneck. Um, I used a rayon jersey that I got from Fabric Mart, and I think that this is gonna be another core basic that I'm gonna be wearing all winter long because the neutral colors and the stripes just mean that it kind of takes it up a notch from being just like a plain, solid shirt but I do think that I, it will go with a lot of different things in my wardrobe. I've already layered it underneath um, some of my uh, 
my Zadie jumpsuit and I would also see myself wearing it with both of my pinafore dresses. But in this video, I went ahead and just styled it with a pair of paper bag waist pants. I can't remember the number, but I will put it up on the screen. And this is a look that I would wear to work. Um, I do think that this turtleneck is super comfortable and easy to wear. You can layer it underneath sweaters or shirts or just anything really. So um, yeah, this, this was actually a good month, I think, for basics that I'm gonna be getting a lot of wear out of. And I'm really looking forward to making more of these turtlenecks because I just think that they're gonna get so much wear in my wardrobe. And the final piece that I finished for the month of October is actually a refashion and it is what I am wearing. I had made the Sew Over It Heather dress. This was my second version and I finished this kind of right when the weather was changing, when it was starting to warm up. And um, so this sweatshirting material, I had gotten it from Joanne Fabrics and the issue with it was that it basically has no stretch. It has very, very little stretch. So when I created this dress, I had to take um, smaller seam allowances in order to get the dress on and off because there was so little stretch. So what that ended up happening was the neckline was like really wide and it was kind of open and droopy and it just didn't look very good. So all I had to do to make it wearable is I went back in and I ripped off the, the original neckband. This is a, a ribbing fabric. This is not the sweatshirting fabric, but it's a very stretchy rib. Um, so it was too, it was like wavy, it was too open and big because it was too long for the actual dress. So I just took the neckband off, shortened it four inches, and then put it back on again. And that way now my dress is wearable and it's very comfortable. It's probably another one that I would wear, mostly wear for around the house, but I do think that it looks nice enough that I could wear it to work if I want to. And it's just a very basic black sweatshirt dress, so who doesn't need one of those? So those were all of the things that I finished in the month of October. Let me know in the comments which one was your favorite. I do think that this was a really good month for me in terms of um, garments that I actually am going to wear over and over again. There's not too many things that were, you know, sort of more frosting pieces that maybe aren't going to get a lot of wear. So I, again, I'm really happy with how it turned out this month. And thank you so much for watching my video. I appreciate that you take time out of your day to watch my channel and I will see you next time.